My name is François Fuchs and I'm the head of the Laboratory of Cancer Epigenetics at the Free University of Brussels in Belgium. And one of our recent interests has to do with DNA demethylation, coined the sixth base. And in a way you could see that as new kids on the epigenetic block. What do we mean by that? Let's remind first DNA methylation. We are most aware, of course, of its importance in biology, in medicine, and it's attracting more and more attention because of the involvement of DNA methylation in several biological processes, in stem cell, neurobiology, immunology. And for sure there is a growing interest from a more applied point of view because of the role of DNA methylation in some diseases, such as in cancer, and it seems also in major human diseases, possibly, for example, in type 2 diabetes or in neuronal disease, as Alzheimer or Parkinson's diseases. So there is really a growing interest in DNA methylation. Now, when we think about DNA methylation, we need to consider the epigenetic reversibility. We do know, it's quite well studied now, that you have Of course, when we talk about epigenetic, we talk about histone modifications, modifications on proteins, but also modification of DNA, DNA methylation. For histone modifications, we do know that you can add chemical groups to different amino acids, like acetyl groups to lysines. You can remove such acetyl groups. You can add methyl groups to histones remove them. So the reversibility is fairly well known and a bunch of enzymes have been identified. Now for DNA methylation, it is known that you can add methyl groups by some enzymes called DNA methyl transferases, but it is known that in several biological processes and in cancer, you can remove these methyl groups. But the identity of the enzymes that can do such job have remained elusive for many years. And so recently, the identification of novel epigenetic enzymes have attracted a lot of attention. These enzymes are called the TET proteins. And what they do is that they further modify DNA. So you can add methyl groups to DNA, DNA methylation, but you can also hydroxymethylate DNA. It's quite an exotic word, but what it means is that you go from unmethylation to methylation of DNA by the DNA methyl transferases, and then this is further processed by these TET enzymes that will add hydroxymethyl groups to cytosines, and that will, by still poorly understood mechanisms, go to unmethylated cytosines. So you can close the loop, if you wish, from unmethylation, methylation, and then go back to the unmethylated state. So reversibility of DNA methylation. And as mentioned, the state and hydroxymethylation have been identified actually only fairly recently. But there is a growing interest, and this field is is growing at a a very uh, fast pace, because we do know that they are important in some biological processes. And for example, they are important in development. They are important in cell pluripotency, stem cells, cells. Embryonic stem cells are, do need this hydroxymethylation in the TET for their differentiation. And also, they do play a role in neurogenesis. As a matter of fact, this hydroxymethylation of DNA is most prevalent in ES cells and in the brain. We still don't know exactly why, how, but that's, that is what is observed. And then, also of interest, there is clearly a connection between this TET hydroxymethylation, so this six base, and cancers. What do we know? We know that in some leukemia, one of the TET protein, which is called TET2, there are actually three TETs, and TET2 has been shown to be mutated in some leukemia very early on and very often. Actually, it's the gene that will encode for the TET2 protein is the gene in some leukemia that is mutated at the earlier stage and the most often. And so a whole community, all community of hematologists have really a deep interest into the function of these TET proteins. There are also some mice models which have been generated and which can recapitulate the disease. And fairly recently, it has been proposed that this hydroxymethylation and the TET could be involved in other cancers. It has been shown that in some melanoma, there is possibly hydroxymethylation, which is reduced, and it has been suggested that this could be an epigenetic hallmark. And that's important because that could provide a new concept into the link between cancers and epigenetics. Why? Because we do know that in terms of DNA methylation, the link with DNA methylation and cancer is that, at least in part, you have an hypermethylation at 
tumor suppressor genes. And that is known to be involved in driving cancers. So you have too many methyl groups which are added tumor suppressor genes. These are silenced and can contribute to cancerogenesis. But now, maybe that a further step to consider is this hydroxymethylation in the TET proteins. Because you could have actually an hypo hydroxymethylation at tumor suppressor genes. That means less to little hydroxymethylation. And because that could be involved in demethylation, when you have less hydroxymethylation, that could lead to hypermethylation. And as a matter of fact, the mutations that are seen in TET2 could lead to the hypermethylation that is known to occur in leukemia. The message here is that in cancers, maybe that you need to consider not only aberrant, aberrant DNA methylation, but also improper hydroxymethylation. Could it be that hydroxymethylation is a hallmark of cancers in which a cancer cells could, as said, have not only this hypermethylation but this hypohydroxymethylation. And so the future, clearly, in epigenetics and cancers will need to take into account these two states of DNA modifications. And we will try to understand in the future how, why, when and where this hypohydroxymethylation, these TET, do contribute to cancer. So that's where we are in the field at the moment, and, and many more novel discoveries will soon occur. Maybe one piece of, of novelty in the field is related to how do the TET functions? What are their mode of actions? What are the mechanisms by which they work? And in my group, we have tried to tackle these questions by identifying the protein partners to search for the protein partners of the TETs, because that is still poorly understood. And we feel that by knowing better with which proteins, complexes, they can interact, that will provide us with some hints as to how they function. To summarize some of our recent work, we did identify one of the first partners of the TET proteins. This partner is called OGT, and OGT is an interesting protein. It's actually an, an enzyme which basically adds sugar groups to many proteins. And we show that there is a link, and we show that the TET will impact on the ability of this OGT enzyme to modify proteins and that it could explain at least partly how the TETs could regulate gene expression. And in the future, we would like to see what the biological consequence of this novel link between TET and OGT. Is there any role in cancer, maybe in uh, ES cells? So that will be our future work indeed. So thank you very much.